welcome everybody to uh, DC Cap East Sessions 2021. This is our first event for the for the new year. Hopefully, everyone had a good holiday season. Um, hopefully, you also had a great Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend as well for yourself uh, as a merchant or distributor or whatever type of business you guys are doing. So, hopefully, 2021 was good for you guys and you're able to pass survival mode and being able to actually thrive in the in those moments. But hopefully, 2021 is prosperous for all you guys as well. So. Um, my name is Tim Deep. I'm the customer success manager here at DC Cap. I'd like to welcome you guys all here to our e-sessions. Um, these this platform is really just to help all you guys, everybody in the ecosystem, to be um, to be collaborating with each other and to be able to learn about what's the new industry standards in e-commerce. So welcome. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Nexus, a liquid web brand. They have a special offer that if you use the code DCKAP, DCCAP to save, you can save 25% off your first three months of managed Magenta hosting. And you could go to nexus.net slash um, Magenta or forward slash Magento. So, and yeah, just thank you guys for, for joining in. Um, hopefully you were able to join in with our pre-networking session. We also have another one after this. So stay tuned for that and look forward to meeting with all you guys. Next, I'd like to bring up Baroth Vignesh. He's the senior software engineer at DC Cap. He's gonna be talking about Black Friday Cyber Monday strategies uh, and what they were able to achieve um, for one of our clients to, to have 100% increase in sales. Broth, he's a, he's a very young and enthusiastic developer who started his career as a SAP hybris developer and now is a certified full stack Magento developer. His passion and in in-depth debugging along with detailed architectural knowledge have brought him here. He is also currently supporting budding, budding developers to get their expertise. So I'd like to welcome Bharath Vignesh to the stage. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining the e-session. So uh, today I'm going to discuss about uh, BFCM strategies, uh, strategies to achieve 100% increase in sales for one of our clients. And uh, about myself, hello world. So uh, my name is Bharath Vignesh. So I'm working as a senior software engineer with DCCAP. And also, I'm a Adobe certified master, Magento Commerce full stack developer. Uh, so, those who don't know, you know, this uh, credential is the combination of three certifications from Adobe: uh, the front end, the professional, the JavaScript. And apart from the professional, I'm crazy about bikes. So, in during holidays, you can find me in any of the stations at TVA with my bike. So, uh, this is basically about myself. And um, this is the agenda that I'm going to. Uh, talk about today. Uh, first, uh, we are going to discuss about the strategy for that we follow for BFCM sales and uh, and uh, how we increase the page performance of the website for our client. So before going to that, I will also be explaining how the page speed is evaluated, first of all. And uh, then I'll be walking through what are the uh, pain points in the default the JS bundling and how it is overcome by the advanced JS bundling. And also, I'll be uh, talking about the importance of uh, lazy load and the WP format in images. And then uh, I'll be discussing about uh, one of the uh, pain points again, uh, uh, from uh, which is faced for, which is faced by our client by an admin. So we we gave an innovative solution with RabbitMQ. So I'm also going to touch base about the solution, and then we are going to discuss about the sales data or uh, during this uh, BFCM week. About the strategies for for the BFCM sale, <clears throat> so we are very well, very well prepared for these clients. You know, uh, when we found when we see the BFCM is around the corner, so we are very really, very well prepared. We had an internal meeting with uh, with our senior software engineers, other engineers, and uh, the architects and the code managers and the infrastructure managers. So we also have we are we are very really, very really, we are very well prepared for this. So, uh, so we had an internal meeting like uh, we are we are discussing like uh, what needs to be done. So that the website, uh, you know, website stays uh, 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 still stable. It does not go down during uh, the high traffic period. So, so the so uh, during that discussion, so we we made a few. Uh, uh, we discovered we we got a few points. So uh, the one is we provided a 24 into 7 support uh, during the Black Friday and the Cyber Monday day. Uh, we we made we made sure that like, uh, the resource is very much uh, well informed and is available, and then uh, uh, we made sure like we we are we are going to monitor 200 percentage during the uh, traffic peak hours. 
so with the data with all the data we have got during these years so we we know what are the uh, peak calls for the website so we also double check with the client so we made sure we give we give a 200% monitoring at that that particular time and then now uh, we closely work with the nexus team so thanks to the team so we'll be we are we and our nexus team are always in uh, uh, you know in we are uh, we are always in touch we are uh, you know email like uh, the nexus team will be communicating with us like how the websites are performing how the notes are performing how the memory usage is so uh, we closely work with the nexus team and then uh, we also thought of uh, you know improving the page speed uh, uh, before this uh, bfcm b so for that particular purpose we introduced we incorporated the advanced bundling concept to the website and then uh, we upgraded and addition, added additional memory storage uh, you know uh, with the help of nexus and uh, and then we reduced the upload time by 4 to 5 seconds and then we also improved the page speed uh, by image optimization technique and the lazy loading concept as well okay so on to the strategies uh, you know uh, uh, i would like to split it into two levels uh, the one is on the server level optimization that we did and the other is the code level optimization so on to the server level optimization so most of the parts are, are, are took care by the nexus team uh, the first thing is as i said you know uh, uh, we had an internal meeting and uh, we with, uh, with we also have a wisb uh, which is a dc caps data analytic uh, data analytical tool so uh, our wisb team has provided the you know uh, uh, estimated uh, you know they estimated the sales report and the order uh, order uh, order value for the black friday and cyber monday so with all the data and we also know what the order, average order value is so with all this data we figured out how much incoming traffic that will be receiving uh, during this uh, bfcm so based on that uh, you know we thought of uh, increasing the nodes by two we already have six nodes with load balancer for this particular customer uh, we thought of uh, increasing. Uh, we thought of adding uh, additional two nodes for this particular load balancer. So this is one major step that we made uh, on the server level. And the second is we configured the cache in a separate server. We separated the Redis cache into a, to a dedicated server. Previously, it was uh, installed in on each of the nodes. So which the problem is uh, the server, the particular node is uh, responsible uh, for handling the incoming requests as well as the uh, cache requests as well. So uh, so what we did is we migrated uh, the uh, Redis uh, cache to a separate server. So that particular node will be responsible for only handling the Redis, and the rest of the nodes will be taking care of the incoming requests. So again, this uh, this gave a very good improvement for us uh, with respect to speed as well. Onto the other, uh, onto the last uh, in the server level optimization, so we upgraded our uh, file servers, DB servers, and the load balancer from 1G to uh, 10G. Uh, so thanks to the Nexus team for the you know for the speed that they showed during this upgrade, uh, we 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 thought of you know we completed it uh, in, in in within some hours. You know. So this is something uh, we have uh, unlocked. And uh, onto the code level optimization, so uh, so we we implemented the advanced bundling. So I'll be deep diving like what is advanced bundling uh, in the coming slides, and we also. Uh, uh, incorporated a WebP format from Google for the image optimization as well. I'm, I'm also going to deep dive regarding the image optimization as well. So these are the strategies that we follow for uh, for our client on uh, BFCM. So uh, before uh, before I'm going to before I'm going to tell like how we increase how we improve the page performance. Uh, before uh, before going to that, I would like to uh, explain like how first of all the page speed is evaluated. So what are the factors involved in uh, you know what are the factors involved in uh, uh, you know when you visit a website on the uh, on the browser? So what are the assets responsible? So so what what actually decides like the website is loading in five seconds or a website is taking seven to eight seconds to load? So what factors actually are involved during uh, you know during this uh, for the page speed? So. So for the page speed, uh, there are two things uh, that are solely uh, responsible for uh, for this. The one is the front end assets that has been loaded, and the second is the infrastructure and the background and the back end code. So I'm not uh, going to deep dive on the second point. So, but I'm I would like to uh, give high level introduction or high level uh, you know uh, explanation on the second point. 
so about infrastructure so uh, you know uh, we make sure like you know uh, your server is uh, well enough to handle the incoming requests so make sure the read these catches uh, and the one catches are very well configured and uh, cdn of course make sure uh, cdn is installed properly uh, if your uh, if your website is having a high uh, traffic you uh, high concurrent users make sure uh, whether just to check whether you need a load balancer or not based on that increase the nodes for your uh, Uh, the website. So these are these are the things that comes under the infrastructure. <clears throat> under the backend code optimization, make sure the code audit is uh, done uh, done properly. Uh, make sure the for loops are used efficiently. Uh, avoid using the uh, nested for loop. Uh, if you are declaring, if you are creating a object, uh, make sure it is created outside of the for loop, not inside. So you know these are the small things or the very important things that are really. Uh, impact the uh, web page performance so this is about the back end and uh, so i'm i'm going to deep dive or regarding the uh, front end assets now so what are front end static cases so so when you visit a website in the browser so what happens in the what happens in the background so html javascript css so these three frameworks are are the are the backbone of the website you know these three are uh, the responsible for the web load time and along with the images and the videos and, uh, and uh, along with the fonts as well so so these are so this is what uh, uh, this is what is uh, you know rendered as a web page for you uh, for in the browser so html is used to html is a templating so it is used for templating the website and the css is for you know styling for the styling purposes it styles the websites and also uh, it is also responsible for including the fonts and the javascript is responsible to uh, you know interact with the back end code using a, using ajax or validating the forms or uh, or creating a pop up you know uh, it it, uh, it allows us to uh, to perform a dynamic actions or uh, dynamic uh, yeah dynamic things on the front end so these three things are uh, you know uh, backbone on the backbone for the front end so uh, So what I will tell is like you no know, web page speed is directly proportional to the uh, number of requests, the size of the request of these particular assets. So the lower the number of requests, the lower the number of the size of the uh, request, the faster will be the web size. So this is the basic. Uh, so you no, know, this is the basic. Uh, um, uh, what to tell? Maybe principle behind the to having the uh, you know faster web size. so uh, by default magento uh, provides uh, uh, you know optimization technique for all these three static assets for the html you can minify the uh, html uh, minifying is nothing nothing but uglifying the html it just removes all the white spaces in between and uh, you know at the end we will have will be having the lighter html file with the reduced size uh, for the css magento also provides uh, you know minify and merge Uh, as i said minify uh, will just aggregate the css file uh, the merge is nothing but let's say you are using 100 uh, css files in your website so when you when you uh, click on merge option uh, all the 100 uh, css files will be merged into one single file so it will be really bulky but uh, you know uh, at the end you will be uh, reducing the number of requests so you'll be saving the 99 request uh, on your browser So, which will have a very good uh, performance improvement uh, on your website. For the JavaScript, again, uh, you know, Magento provides uh, uh, three techniques, three optimization techniques for JavaScript: uh, the minify, uh, which is just simplifying the JavaScript, and merge. As I said, for CSS, it will merge all the uh, JavaScript file into one single file. It will be really bulky. Uh, the number of requests might be reduced, but the size of the request will be uh, increased. In the while merging JavaScript, so to overcome this problem, uh, again they have introduced the bundling JS. So bundle is nothing but you know, let's say you have 100 JavaScript files used in the website. Uh, when you use bundling option, so all these uh, 100 files will be bundled into small, small, uh, small, small JavaScript files. So mostly it will range from five to eight or five to ten. Uh, so Uh, so these bundles will be called on uh, all the pages so with this the size of the request will also be reduced and the number of requests will also be reduced when compared uh, to not using this optimization technique so uh, if you see the title so no request is faster uh, faster than no request from 
are from India. So uh, we are the Google Advocate uh, Manager. Uh, so uh, so he wrote a book about uh, the uh, our website performance. So I just got the quote uh, from there. So no request is for, faster than no request. The meaning is like you should avoid the number of requests. So which which is which is nothing but you will be have you will be having an increased uh, website uh, performance. Website speed. So uh, I'll be deep diving uh, about the uh, default uh, JavaScript bundle. So what is the pain point? So what is the uh, problem with the default uh, JavaScript bundle, and uh, how it is solved by the advanced JavaScript bundle? That is a, that we that I will be going to detail now. So uh, so I have uh, my local installations where I enabled uh, default JavaScript bundling. Uh, so maybe I will just play this video and show what the problem is. Uh, I just throttle the speed of this particular website to slow 3G network to have a real time speed uh, because in developer mode, it will be uh, fast when using the Luma website, I mean, uh, vanilla website of Magento, but uh, to experience the real time uh, speed, I just throttle to slow 3G because in the real time world, a uh, lot of factors uh, affect the website uh, speed like uh, slow network connections or uh, uh, or long uh, long thresholds so maybe i can uh, play this video if i just uh, enable the uh, i just open the developer tools in the chrome i just requested for your home page uh, in my luma website you can see I have a throttle to slow 3G and I disable the local browser catches. And uh, you can see uh, fancy pin bundles has been requested and it's still loading. <clears throat> so I'll just uh, forward this. Yeah. So uh, with the default bundling, you can see it is taking 54 seconds uh, to load uh, to load the home page uh, in slow 3G network throttling. So now, what the problem with this is like you know, uh, as I said, like, let's take, let's uh, let's uh, assume you have 100 JavaScript files in your website, and uh, all those 100 JavaScript has been split into 10 bundles over here. Uh, let's say uh, in the checkout, uh, maybe uh, you are having a payment uh, method, and that payment method is loading one JavaScript file, uh, which will which will be only used on the checkout page. But when we're using bundling or merging, you know that particular uh, JavaScript file will be merged, and it will be called on all the pages, starting from home page, category page, uh, you know, product page through till the checkout page. But you know the particular checkout JavaScript file is not even you know not needed for the home pages. So you know you, you are unwantedly uh, requesting a file which is not needed on the home page. So if, if there is a way, if you, if there is a way to find all those unwanted files, and if you if you reduce that, if you are if you reduce that unwantedly calling the file that is needed for the home page, then you'll be having an improved performance. So there is so this is a basic concept behind the advanced bundling. So what is advanced uh, uh, JavaScript bundling? So as I said, like, you know, you're combining uh, the individual lines of codes in a form of bundles and uh, making requests for those bundles only on the required pages. So yeah, as I said, like, you know, a generally browser rows all the JavaScript bundles uh, on all the pages, not just the one needed for that particular page. So uh, with these are, with uh, incorporating advanced JavaScript bundling, what we will do is like, uh, we will identify what are the JavaScript files needed for the home page, and we will create a separate bundle for the particular home page. And again, we will identify what are the JavaScript files that is needed for the uh, category page, and uh, we will collect that and we will create a bundle a bundle uh, as a category uh, page, and we will uh, call that only on the particular category page. The same applies for all the pages like the CMOS category, uh, product listing page, and the checkout page, and the cart page. So there are some of the files that uh, that will be uh, called across the website that, that will be used across the website. So we'll identify all those kind of files and uh, we'll create a separate bundle for those. Uh, we will name it as common and we will uh, we will call it on all the pages. 
which means you know at the end of the uh, or at the end of this process you will be having you will be left out with only two bundles on each particular page previously it was 10 bundles called but now it will be only two bundles so the size of the request has been reduced and also the uh, the number of requests has also been reduced with this you will be definitely having a uh, uh, very major performance improvement so on to the next slide i again installed an advanced bundling in my local machine i again uh, throttled the speed of it to slow 3g network and uh, let us check out the results Okay, here we go. So, uh, so with the advanced bundling, so it took uh, 24.56 seconds to load, which is now you know 100% improvement, 100% um, speed improvement for your website. So, which is really massive. So, so this is this so so uh, so these are the results. Uh, you know, these are the real time results. So the same the this is what we incorporated for for our client, and we did uh, see a major. Uh, you know, performance improvement after implementing the advanced bundling. We also got a very good score on the on the GT metrics and the Lighthouse uh, scores as well. So, how to incorporate advanced JS bundling? So, so these are the three guides. Uh, there are uh, there are a number of ways to incorporate advanced JS bundling. So, I, I have attached the links over here. You can also find the uh, official uh, uh, official blog from the DevDocs. So they have suggested to use the Phantom JS or the JS and the Node.js to incorporate uh, the advanced JS something. And uh, thanks to Meshpack Mitchell team, you know they have made uh, this uh, advanced JS funding easier. So we can, with the help of uh, Meshpack Mitchell, you, you can very well, uh, very easily incorporate the advanced JS funding to your website. Okay, so the other important action item that uh, we did for for this particular customer is like. Uh, we we analyzed the each extensions and uh, we figured out what are the unused extensions. Let's say uh, unused out of the out of the box extension, as uh, you know, uh, Magento uh, ships along with uh, uh, many uh, payment options, uh, the shipping options, and as well as the third party extensions. Uh, for example, uh, Magento ships along with the PayPal, uh, Authorize.net, and for the shipping method, ships along with the UPS, USPS, and DHL. But for this particular uh, customer, we do not use any of those. Uh, even though it will be enabled, even though it will be disabled by default. However, uh, the components uh, will be still loading on the checkout pages or whatever the pages uh, that it is called. So we figured out all these uh, unused extensions and we disabled the same. Once we disabled, we also we also noticed that uh, the number of requests also reduced on the uh, on the particular pages on the front end. So. These are the action items, and the and the other action item is like uh, uh, we inspected each page, and we found slow loading uh, component or the JavaScript files. Uh, we debugged that particular file, and we figured out what is making uh, that particular JavaScript file to slow load, and uh, we resolved the same issue. So this is something uh, we have done, and uh, and uh, yeah. So and again, so uh, we also uh, we also uh, reached out to the third party uh, vendor uh, to leverage the browser catchy. So so once they did, once they leverage their uh, you know browser catchy, we 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 noticed a very good uh, you know uh, score improvement in the GT metrics. But uh, it, it it did have slight impact in the uh, performance, but uh, we saw a major uh, difference on the GT metrics score and the lack of score. So these are the other important action items that we did. So uh, for for okay, so regarding the images, we also optimized the images very well. So according to HTTP archive, so they said like you no, know, it says uh, you know uh, images is the uh, static the images is the static content which has been used uh, which has been requested uh, most of the time uh, across the website across the internet. So we need to uh, make sure this, uh, you know, uh, we optimize these images very well. So 
so what we did for our for our uh, website is like we we made sure you know we lazy load the images so what is lazy loading maybe i can uh, i can play this video quickly and uh, maybe i can explain that up there so i as you can see the website is not loading it is already loaded uh, only three images are visible on this front end but uh, while you scroll you know the images are requested and it is loaded instantly so this is what is actually lazy loading you know uh, let's say you let's say one let's say your home page let's okay let, let's let's take a good example on the product listing page let's say your e-commerce website has uh, uh, your listing 60 products uh, in the product listing page and uh, what happens is like you know all the 60 uh, product images uh, will be requested and it will be loaded and once once it is loaded uh, you know the uh, loading icon will be removed so until then it will be loading until then it will be inaccessible for the customer uh, to access the website so uh, the problem is like you know uh, the customer will be seeing only three to six products on their uh, mobile screen or the desktop screen uh, the rest of the products will be uh, in the off screen so there is no meaning in loading the uh, invisible images and, and waiting for the same so with the with the implication of uh, the uh, lazy loading you know we will be loading only uh, the, that particular three to six images uh, which is only visible on the uh, on the screen and, uh, and the rest will not be loading that so while this while the customer scroll we will be requesting those images and will be loading that instantly so this is the concept behind the lazy loading and we apply the same for for our customer for the for all the pages so it did create a very big impact on the product listing page for us. We did see a massive uh, uh, score improvement, uh, speed improvement on the product listing page. So, uh, so lazy loading is one thing that we did for the images. And the other thing we did is like uh, we converted the uh, JPEG and PNG image format to the WebP format. Uh, so the WebP is uh, currently developed by Google. And uh, it is a modern image format, uh, you know, that uh, provides superior lossless and lossy compression for images. Uh, you know, WebP lossless images are 26% smaller in size compared to PNGs, and the lossy images are are even, you know, almost 90% uh, smaller than compared to the PNGs without uh, uh, without losing the qualities. So we we applied uh, we converted all our images uh, on the home page. Uh, on the on the targeted pages and we converted the image format from png to uh, WebP. so we did see a massive decrease in the page size uh, for instance on the home page uh, it was previously on 13 mb and after converting some particular images to WebP format uh, the the web page size has been reduced to 9 mb so uh, so we did see a very good improvement after converting to uh, WebP uh, without losing any uh, quality on the images so, uh, so there is also a, a third-party extension. Uh, uh, you know, uh, MST is providing a very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, extension to convert all your uh, images to the WebP. So that is something uh, we have used on our site. So with all this, uh, you know, with all these actions, so with all these things, we have uh, more digitalized. So. Uh, we have uh, logged the uh, performance before and after that, and uh, this is a graph uh, mentioning the same. Uh, we did see a very good improvement on the cart page uh, by reducing from uh, 26 to 7 seconds. So these are the performance improvements uh, that we saw uh, before we have CM, so which, uh, which really played a very big role uh, in achieving the 100% uh, increase in the sales. Okay. So, uh, so, so what? So these are the things uh, related to the front end. So I also want to touch base uh, about the, about our initial solution that we provided to the client. Uh, so you know, with the increase in sales, you know, uh, there will also be increasing uh, in the order processing speed as well, order management as well. Uh, the client and the admin team were facing and uh, you know uh, facing a trouble, uh, facing a pain point. Uh, this particular customer uh, is using a third-party extension for templating purposes, uh, for templating the custom option purposes. 
which means you know a template uh, custom option template will be created and uh, it will be applied to the n number of products on a single uh, click of save button so which is the time so what what the problem is like when when they do that it uh, the custom this particular customer has a huge product database so when they save the template it usually takes around 20 to 25 minutes to save so uh, until then that bin has to wait to uh, continue his, uh, to resume his uh, regular process so that particular has been may, may have to process the orders uh, may have to process the orders or the inventory uh, so you know all this the overall process has been slowed on due to this particular uh, particular pain point so this is something uh, client has brought to us and uh, we proposed a solution to save that uh, product or the template uh, in the off screen uh, with the help of message broker software called RabbitMQ. So usually this uh, Rabbit message broker software uh, is used in e-commerce to, you know, to connect, uh, to send the data to ERP or to the CRM or so, you know, or from the ERP to uh, e-commerce. So basically it is used for, for that kind of purposes, but uh, we innovatively uh, propose a solution to use the RabbitMQ. So what we basically do is we'll get the request, we'll get the save request, and we will add it to the uh, RabbitMQ queue, and uh, we'll uh, display a notice message saying, uh, you know, your request has been added to the queue, and we'll be notifying once it is done, and uh, we'll be redirecting to the, again, uh, the whatever page the client needs. And in the background, you know, RabbitMQ consumer will be taking the request, and uh, it will be saving, and it will be notifying the admin. So I have a pictorial uh, flowchart of the same uh, for the better understanding in the coming slides. So yeah, so this is what the usual uh, flow is about. So when an admin uh, clicks on save button, uh, it returns to the controller. Uh, the controller validates, validates the request and then uh, uh, it triggers, uh, it triggers the, uh, before save events. And uh, this, uh, this event, you know, it will be calling the n number of observers. So once it is done, uh, the values will be saved to the database. And uh, once it is saved, again, after savings has been triggered, and uh, again, it will be calling in number of observers. Once it is done, uh, it will be uh, displaying a success message. So this is what happens in the back end when you click on save. So until then, the screen the screen will be loading. You know, the loader icon will be spinning on your screen. Uh, it will be the website, the back end will be inaccessible until then. So. Uh, so this is what basically happens. This is what, this is, what is the usual flow. And uh, this is what is rabbit MQ flow is like. So we again created a separate button called uh, save a sync uh, right below the save button. So when the admin clicks on save a sync button, uh, it reaches to a controller and the controller will handle the request to the queue. And then uh, once it is done, we will uh, display a notice message to the admin. Uh, so the, sc the screen load time will be massively reduced, you know, uh, with the, with the RabbitMQ flow. So what happens in off screen is, uh, you know, uh, RabbitMQ consumer will receive the message and it, again, it again validates the request and uh, it triggers the observers and saves the value to the DB and again saves the after save even the uh, observers and then it notifies the admin and uh, the process will be killed. So this is what happens in the off screen. So the client don't need to uh, you know, bother about what happens off screen, but the values will be uh, saved uh, for him. So with uh, <clears throat> so after this uh, both performance uh, on both the front end and back end uh, improvements, you know, uh, on the BFCM week, uh, we saw a uh, double the sales. Uh, you know, it is 2.6 million uh, in 2020. So this is what uh, the achievement for, for the BFCMP. Uh, I would like to compare this data with the 2019. Uh, it was around 1.4 million for them. Uh, it, it is almost no 100% increase in the sales of, after all these uh, you know, performance improvements and the server improvements. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions on this. Yeah. Good job, Rod. That was some good content. So I think probably about 30 minutes of content and everything. So uh, stick around too. And then we'll, we'll bring Gary up and then Gautam, he just generated about three questions for you. So maybe we'll do three questions each uh, for both of you guys. Next, I'd like to bring up Gary, Gary Smith.
from from Nexus. He's a he's our partner channel. He's from the partner channel team, and he's worked in the e-commerce industry since the early two thousands as a merchant, consultant, and agency manager. Since the early early days of Magento, he's seen the potential in Magento's customizable and extendable platform, and he currently lives in Huntsville, Alabama. So I'd like to welcome up Gary Smith from Nexus. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. Uh, and I've got a little bit of slideshow I can share here. Great. As Tim said, I'm Gary Smith with Nexus, and I work on the channel partner team. I have the privilege of working with great partners like DC Cap. And the project that Broth was talking about is a great example of how a hosting company and an agency work together to achieve a result for a merchant. Bottom line, put more dollars in their bank account. Um, Nexus is a hosting company. We're owned by Liquid Web. We do all the things you see on this slide here. So we have a broad array of hosting solutions that we can offer. I'm going to focus on what we offer for Magento, and it really boils down to two buckets. One is our cloud plans, which work great for small through fairly large businesses, actually. And if we get into a situation, as we did in this project, where we exceed the capabilities of those cloud plans currently, we can also deploy um, physical servers cluster and clusters. So to talk about to talk about the situation that this particular client was in when DC Cap brought us into the picture, um, they were having a little bit of problems getting ready for the holidays because their existing host, which by the way is a great company and and provides outstanding support in general, but they're not as focused on Magento as we are. So our support and our server configura configuration and optimization is capable of looking at a problem like this, uh, looking at all the tools and techniques that Broth just described in, in his presentation and coming up with a solution that can support all of the objectives that they wanted to achieve. And, you know, when you look at all those technical considerations, it really just boils down to how can the site be fast and stay fast, even when we're going into the holidays. So they were concerned about the support levels from their host. They were concerned about capacity. And they were concerned, lastly, having realized that they were in this situation rather late in the, in the year, which was 2019, actually. Uh, they were a little concerned about how fast they could migrate, which adds up to being concerned that they wouldn't be ready for that holiday season. So the solution that DC Cap and Nexus provided was best-in-class Magento support. Brath just spoke in a great deal of detail about all of the techniques that, that they use to speed a site up. And there's, that shows the big difference between just knowing how to de develop a site and get it out of the box and get it working at some level versus truly optimizing it to work fast and deliver pages faster. So we went through a detailed analysis of what they currently had and how a comparable Nexus setup could help them achieve those goals. One of the interesting things in looking at what they had is that in some cases we actually didn't propose quite as beefy a components as the customer was already getting. And the customer expressed some concern about that. But what we're looking at is the difference between truly optimizing a server and a website versus just what we call brute force. You can always beef up a server up to a point. You can always throw more nodes at a server cluster. But by looking at what the real problems are by really analyzing them. We were, both companies were able to help this customer um, get to the finish line. And we were able in this case to do it really fast. Uh, normally the, the quote and build time for a, a cluster like this is in the neighborhood of two weeks. Our cloud plans, we can deploy instantly, but these big clusters usually take a long time to get ready. But because 
we knew the situation was urgent and DC cap brought it to us. We were able to do it more in a timeline of two days. And it's, I'll just say, don't try this at home, but we were able to get it done for them in this case. And, um, after we deployed it, we were able to take another look within a month or so and do some things to improve their performance even further, which adds up to those results that Baroth was talking about in his presentation. This merchant has continued to grow. Um, and this shows again, the flexibility of a, a really well configured and designed Magento hosting solution. Uh, they added on two holiday nodes in around mid 2020 last year to be ready for even more traffic because this company has continued to grow. And uh, as planned, they removed them in January because they don't need them right now. But when they get back to the busy season later this year, they'll be able to easily add them on. And in a way that kind of forms a before and after picture because in 2019, the situation was fairly stressful. They were working um, with a host that wasn't as flexible and able to accommodate what they needed to get done. And so they had to do an entire site migration. But now that they're with us and with DC Cap, they're able to really just look at their capacity and say, hey, we need more and we can order more for them and get, get that going. Um, again, to talk a little bit about the cloud plans, which can serve so many customers through the small, medium, and even kind of large segment, our cloud plans are even easier to deploy and scale. Uh, our cloud plans just have push button resizing. So if you're on a small cloud plan and you're heading into the holidays, and you need to go to a medium or even a large, we can, you can just go in and push button, upgrade those resources. All of our plans also offer auto scaling and the cloud plans, they offer auto scaling that automatically kicks in if you're just having a busy day or a week. And we can also look at advanced auto scaling options with you if you're having an event coming up, like the proverbial Super Bowl ad or the morning show appearance, so that sort of thing, or big social media campaign. If you know a traffic surge is coming, we can find a way to uh, scale it up for you just for the few days or weeks that you might need it. Um, so that was really what I had to talk about. Uh, our partnership with DC Cap has been great. I wanted to ask Barath how that merchant is doing in 2020. What has been the long-term effects on their sales after all this great work we both did? Yeah, uh, sure, Terry. Yeah, the client is doing very well in terms of our revenue. You know, uh, when we compare the data between the years 2019 to 2020, uh, the growth percentage is 50%. Uh, so when you compare the data with the year 2017 with uh, 2020, the growth percentage is almost uh, you know, 200 percentage, which is wow. Uh, this wow. year, you know, they did well uh, during the lockdown period. Uh, we can see a good spike uh, in the second quarter of 2020. Uh, the client is growing uh, stronger since they moved from Magento 1 to Magento 2. Uh, the client is also receiving the, uh, you know, order at the rate of uh, four to five orders per second, uh, you know, which yeah. is also very great uh, uh, numbers to have. Yeah. Well, that's tremendous growth and it really justifies all those investments that they made. Um, you mentioned the conversion from Magento 1 to Magento 2, and that's also really key because that's really one of the promises of Magento 2 is that with upgraded code base and a, a better site design, you can achieve better conversion. So it's, it's really at least three layers, isn't it? You know, UX and design, along with the code optimizations you talked about, as well as having an optimized server. Yes, yes, of course, uh, of course, Gary. Uh, all right. And also, the website is also ED compliant. Uh, you know, um, we we are almost doing you know security audits every quarter and uh, security audit by default Magento on every week. So we are also doing this and also regular penetration testing on the website. And uh, we also build so many modules to handle the web industry, uh, which brings in many many restrictions like uh, the age verification or the state zip code restrictions and the customer ban. 
and uh, even now more rules are brought to or ought to be brought uh, in the first quarter by us government uh, which uh, which we are quickly adapting and uh, making sure the website is compatible to all the laws right uh, yeah so these are the something yeah they're they're in a challenging industry as far as marketing aren't they so of course all right yeah. i'll stop my share and bring tim back in so what are some early what actually what are some questions merchants should be asking themselves about holiday readiness early in 2021. Okay. Uh, and I'll take this question. I think as that story we were talking about really illustrates the first question merchants should be asking themselves early in 2021 is how early is it really? Um, or put it more concretely, how long have I really got before my peak time? Um, I used to be in the t-shirt business and when I would create, um, t-shirts for somebody who's going to do a road race or something, they would always say like, well, our road race is going to be on such and such a date. And then when we got started during the order process, they would start realizing, oh, but we need our shirts to our volunteers a week early and we need to do this two weeks earlier and so on and so on. So that date has a tendency to back up and, to obviously translate that to a software project like a, a site redesign or enhancement, we need to look at all of those key milestones on the, on the calendar. And when you consider marketing has to do their part and product has to do their part and the web development team, you know, the engineering side of things has to do their part and you start stacking those time commitments, you start realizing really the time is now. Um, I did some quick calculations and I think if you go on two week two week sprints. Um, we have about 24 sprints until Christmas. So, <laughs> you know, let the, the key to that is understanding how long you really have start really building the timeline for your project now. Good stuff. Yeah, this is very informative stuff for the for all the merchants out there. So and then we have a question for Barath. All right. So how do we handle site slowness and Google ranking impact occurring due to third-party extensions? Okay, so before we uh, start with the, before we start improving the performance uh, of the website, the first key thing you need to do is, first of all, you need to log the performance of the current, uh, uh, current performance uh, in a sheet or whatever the tool that you're comfortable with. So this is the first thing that uh, I would recommend. The second is like you need to uh, choose a, uh, uh, choose a tool and you need to stick with that. Or uh, let's say for GT metrics or the light also, you need to choose one particular tool and you, you need to stick with that. So that is uh, the second thing that I would recommend. And the third is like, you know, work on the uh, suggestions from the tool. Uh, as the question says, you know, uh, <clears throat> so what, uh, how to improve the suggestions from the third party uh, files. So let's say, uh, you know, uh, we are uh, now nowadays the e-commerce is uh, uh, you know more dependent on the third-party JavaScript files. Let's say for the font, uh, let's say for the Google Analytics, so we need to import the uh, Google Analytics JavaScript and uh, for the reviews like the yacht post and uh, for the ad roll. And now we are dependent on the lot of third-party uh, JavaScript files. So when you include all these JavaScript files in your website, uh, you know. So this will render blog. So or, or each page will need to wait for those particular files to be loaded on your website. So until then it will be keep spinning. So which which might be you know, <clears throat> but uh, uh, we, but fortunately all these uh, JavaScript files will load fast. So we not face that uh, render blocking or you know uh, at most at most of the time. Uh, but when you when you do a, a page speed uh, when you do a, a check on the lighthouse or the GT metrics. Uh, You'll have a very uh, low score, low score on the for for this particular third party files. Like the, the most of the suggestion will be like to improve the leverage browser catching of the particular JavaScript file. So it is like uh, GT metrics is mostly recommending to uh, you know leverage the browser catchy of a of a static file up to one year. Uh, but these uh, JavaScript third party files will be changing over. They'll be keep updating these files. Uh, so, uh, so I would recommend to reach out to the particular third party, uh, like the Google or the Orpo, and uh, check with them whether uh, whether on the possibility on now uh, leveraging the browser catchy. So, if it is not possible from their end, so what I would recommend is like you know, uh, load that particular JavaScript file uh, locally. 
So copy that file, uh, watch it by yourself, but make sure you create a cron, uh, make sure you periodically uh, update, uh, you know, uh, update the JavaScript files uh, from that particular third party provider. So in that way you can, uh, uh, you, you can stay updated and uh, you'll also have an improved uh, score in the uh, dev tool. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Gary, you have two questions, right? It's from the, the next one was the, what are the particular things? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, that's pretty much the next one. What are the particular things that B2B merchants or those considering the jump into B2B commerce, uh, what should they consider? Okay. Well, in thinking about B2B e-commerce, I think that one of the mistakes that merchants make is thinking, thinking of it as like a retail e-commerce paradigm, to use that overwork management phrase, that's just a little bit different. Like, you know, it's, it's the same idea, just, you know, bigger quantities or something like that. And really, B2B transactions are completely different than retail transactions and you really have to think about almost everything differently um i'll mention t-shirts again because it, uh, this illustrates like if you as a customer see a t-shirt in a shop on an online shop and you want to buy it there's a certain workflow about you're going to buy that one t-shirt and if on the other hand if you're a company that makes t-shirts you're buying them by the hundreds and you need several sizes and if one of those sizes is out in one warehouse you generally have to get the rest of them from another warehouse or you won't be able to complete the order at all um if you buy a t-shirt one at a time as a consumer you're almost in, you know just pretty much inevitably going to pay with a credit card or paypal or something like that but with your own money but if you're buying hundreds or thousands of them as a b2b transaction you might be using a credit card or you might be using a purchase order and you know you might be authorized to buy it or you might need a supervisor's approval. So thinking through all those things, it really underscores um, how, I mean, for example, Magento's B2B workflows that they allow for and let you customize really are important because every B2B workflow is different. Sometimes it involves in the example, I used a whole bunch of products from a whole bunch of different places. Sometimes it involves a product that really has to be custom assembled from components. Um, so uh, with a lot of complex interrelationships between like all the different pieces that make up an assembly, are they all compatible with each other? So there's a lot of complexity in B2B and, you know, branch off of B2B just for one second and mention this. I think in this world of 2021 now and what we've been through in 2020 where so many transactions that we didn't traditionally think of as e-commerce where we have a mindset of we go to a web browser and we order something and it comes in a cardboard box at our front door. We really have to learn to think more flexibly about how does this order flow work? Um, so my other just bit of advice about thinking about B2B transactions is that almost everything that's sold B2B from one business to another business has in, traditionally involved a sales force. So you have people working for you and your company that do everything from take the orders to generate demand to maintain relationships with their your customers. And I think all too often it's, thought of as being a little bit antagonistic like these people that you had doing all this um those people are worried you're going to replace their functions with a website um and i think you need to plan that project from start to finish with the idea in mind that you're going to employ those people that have taken care of your customers and use the project that you're going to build be it a website pwa uh, mobile apps you know whatever pieces of that b2b e-commerce puzzle you're building need to enable those people who take your customers orders who generate demand with your customers who maintain those relationships with your customers put a tool in their hand that can let them um, go help your customers because if you don't look at that carefully 
you're you're possibly going to run into some friction. And while I'm thinking about that, uh, I doubt Amazon is going to ask me what I think about their new product workflow. They might do some A-B testing or something like that in the background, but they're not really going to ask me because I'm not an important enough customer. In a B2B situation, though, usually, particularly if you're a small, medium business and you're in the business of selling something to other companies, you probably have, you could probably list less than 10 customers that make up a whole bunch of your business. So you would be wise to involve those customers in how do they want to order? You know, what do they want to see in your ordering system? So those are my two big pieces of advice is understand that it's a complex transaction that you have to uh, put online or automate to some extent and work with your salespeople, customers, and other stakeholders when you're building that system. Perfect. Thanks, Gary. Let me see. For number two, question number two for Broth. Will advanced bundling have impacts when we upgrade the Magento versions? So uh, most probably, uh, most likely it's not, uh, you know, the Magento upgrades will not affect the advanced bundling. But however, uh, uh, you know, uh, make sure like, you know, all the bundles are, are staying in proper. Uh, if you're using your uh, mage pack uh, advanced bundling concepts, make sure uh, there are no uh, console errors on the uh, browser tool. Uh, make sure all the new JavaScript files uh, that have been introduced in the latest version has been included to the bundles. So if that is made sure, then, there's, then there, there should not be any problem uh, with the advanced bundling. You can keep upgrading your major versions as long as possible. Perfect. And then last question for you, Broth. Any best practices for code auditing in terms of performance optimiz optimization? Okay, so uh, when we talk about code auditing, so it mostly covers about the uh, uh, about the backend codes. Uh, the best practices is like, uh, as I mentioned uh, during my slides, you know, uh, make sure the for loops are uh, properly uh, used. Uh, avoid using of uh, nested for loops and uh, do not create an object inside a for loop or create an object uh, outside unless only it is necessary. Uh, so these are the uh, major things that we that we need to bother about and uh, make sure uh, the coding is uh, uh, you know compliant to the Magento uh, Magento coding standard and uh, so these are the basic. Uh, Basic code or code audit that uh, relates with the performance optimization. Yeah, so avoid using you know uh, uh, just clear the unused uh, database rows or columns or tables, and uh, and again detect the unused objects uh, and uh, and uh, clear the same. You no, know, these are the, you no know, uh, clearing these unused uh, values will uh, will have a very great uh, uh, you know. Uh, improvement uh, in the performance as well. That's good. And I see that question from Gary. Um, you know, should we ask a question about from Magento 1? Is there a real benefit of going to Magento 2? So maybe if you ask that or answer that. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, the, the question about a benefit from going to Magento 1 to Magento 2, and I believe this case study we talked about involved ultimately having gone from Magento 1 to Magento 2 and the benefits they got. Um, the first cautionary thing is, of course, just replatforming in and of itself may not give you a bunch of benefits if you're in a declining industry, say, or if you just build an absolutely stock Magento, if you had an absolutely stock Magento 1 site and you switch to an absolutely stock Magento 2 site and don't really optimize it, there may not be a lot of benefit. But for most customers who are really chasing some success in e-commerce, you're going to find that it's really vital at this point that you get off of Magento 1. Uh, and listen, Magento 1 was great. I made a living with it from 2008 to 2015 when I left that company where we were using that. So, you know, got lots of nostalgia for Magento 1. But it, first of all, it's end of life. So security 
is an increasing consideration. Nexus offers a safe harbor program to help people who are in that position, but that's not going to last forever. And it's not a, a panacea, frankly. You still have to really watch everything that's going on with Magento One. So you've got, you've got a cost of staying, um, first of all. But thinking about, you know, just what are the positive results of going to Magento 2, um, I would liken it, strangely enough, to owning an old car. And if you have a, everybody who knows me laughs about my dedication to owning Toyota Camrys. At one time, I had three of them. And if you've got a 1999 Toyota Camry, guess what? You can have GPS and a uh, rear facing camera system on it. And you can have a lot of the same features as a 2021 Camry, but you're gonna have to buy them and bolt them on. And they're never gonna be quite the same or as good as going to the latest and greatest. So sooner or later, um, even if you love your old car, it's going to be time to trade it in. And I think that time for Magento 2 is long come and gone. Very well said. Uh, Barathe, do you have any maybe final thoughts on, on that as well, of the benefits of going to Magento 2? So again, as Gary said, uh, it is on uh, end of life. And uh, again, security is a major concern. And uh, so my thoughts is like, I would like to relate with this particular customer. As I mentioned, you know, uh, they had an increased sale after migrating from Magento 1 to Magento 2. And also a lot of third-party extensions are there. Uh, now they have stopped their support for Magento 1. Uh, so let's say uh, like uh, you need to have a very cool feature for your Magento 1 site. Uh, when you go and see on the marketplace, you cannot find any. But on the Magento 2, uh, you know, you will have that uh, uh, feature. Uh, build it already and it will be on uh, from 100 to $200. You can get there. For the Magento one, you want to build it on your own or custom uh, on paying more more on what is available on the marketplace. So again, you need to, as Gary said, I would, I would like to take this particular example. So it, uh, you know, you need to pay, you need to pay a lot for having the rear camera uh, for your old car. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for coming out to DC Cap E session, and I hope everyone has a prosperous 2021. That is less eventful and more peaceful than 2020 and that everybody's business grows. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for joining the DC Cap e session. So hope you enjoyed this session. Hope for this session is beneficial for you and have a very good uh, 2021 for you guys. Thank you so much, Gary. Thanks, Baroth. You guys have a good one. Thanks, Baroth. Thank Learned a lot from what you said. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Gary. Bye. Bye. Thank you once again for joining DC Cap e sessions. We hope you enjoyed all of the, the content that we had in terms of how we we grew 100% for one of our merchants for their Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and also with uh, all the hosting aspects from, from Nexus as well. Again, thank you for Nexus as our, as our sponsor for this event. And uh, you know, feel free to take advantage of the, the promotions that's going on right now. There's a special offer. If you use code DCKAP, um, you will, you'll be able to save 25% off your first three months of managed Magento hosting. Go to uh, nexus.net or slash Magento to take advantage of all this. So what's next? So we, we do have a post event networking room right after this. Uh, feel free to, to look in the comment section in the, in the chat for that link. So it'll, it'll be on Zoom and you'll be able to network with other uh, industry leaders really in the ecosystem to learn you know, how to really build up your e-commerce site or even just to network with other guys, other technology partners within the ecosystem. And then Mark on your calendars. The next DC Cap E sessions will be on February 9th, 2021. See you then. Talk to you soon.